Hey everyone, my name's Amanda. And my name's Jane. And we are the naturalists here at Ebersol. This morning we are down at Jackson Lake, and when students are here, we use Jackson Lake for so many different activities, like canoeing, fishing, kayaking, but we also love to look for what kind of critters we can find. Today we're gonna to be looking for benthic macroinvertebrates, and all those are are little animals without a backbone that live in the bottom of the lake. Depending on what we find and different types or diversity of what we find, it can tell us whether the lake is in healthy water quality or less healthy water quality. It's just one of the ways we can measure that. So we're gonna use these nets and scoop off the edge of the canoe docks and share what we find with you. Let's get scooping. All right, so we just finished scooping in the bottom of the lake um, and we found a lot of different stuff that we would love to share with you. So we're gonna take a little bit closer look here um, at all of our macros and just kind of talk about what that means for our lake's water quality. All right, so this is the first macroinvertebrate we're gonna look at. Um, and while this animal may seem unfamiliar, it's probably more familiar than you think. This is actually a dragonfly larva. Um, so I can count those legs, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a true insect. And larva just means that it's a baby version of a dragonfly. So we may think of a dragonfly as that animal that flies around, um, but actually they spend most of their life in the water at the bottom of wa uh, fresh water looking like this. These guys are one of the big predators of our lake. Um, so they actually have a mouthpiece called a mandible um, that they will kind of propel out to find and catch their prey and it will grab it really well. What does it eat, Miss Jane? This little guy actually eats a lot of the same macroinvertebrates we're going to see today. Um, he is the predator of the bottom of the lake. So if there is a mayfly, dragonfly, caddisfly, beetle um, that's sitting close to him, he will launch that mouth part out just like we saw in the video and eat it up. So we have to be careful about what critters we're putting in the same tub as this because he might eat them up. Now, you might notice on this image, there's um, a little opening that keeps moving. That is actually on the abdomen of a dragonfly. So every insect has a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. So it has three body parts. And this dragonfly, its abdomen has an opening that leads to a cavity where it will suck water in. And in that cavity, there are actually gills. Um, so when it's sucking water in, it can absorb oxygen through those gills. And the gills are kept safe by being on the inside instead of the outside. Um, so a little bit more tolerant to pollutants and things like that. That's so cool. How do they move? Well, actually, they use the same cavity um, that I was describing where their gills are to jet propel them through the water. So they'll suck water in and then they will shoot it out to move through the water, whether it's just to get to somewhere safe or to actually move towards their prey. So it's, it's really cool to see. Um, our water isn't really quite deep enough to show that on this camera, but it gives you an idea of how they could move. He's using his legs right now, but um, if he wanted to go fast, he would shoot that water right out of the um, opening on his abdomen. All right, this is our next macroinvertebrate that we found. I always have a little bit of trouble with these longer, um, this body shape, this long body shape of insect, because there are a few different macroinvertebrates that have this look to them. So I like to use this dichotomous key to help me identify um, which one this is. All right, so I'm pretty confident that this one is a damselfly, and I can tell that because he's got six legs, no wings, two antennas, three tails, um, but if I look at his abdomen, which is this long bit right here, I don't see any gills externally, and mayflies, you can usually um, tell those gills, oh, there's another damselfly um, getting in the camera. It also kind of has these leafy-like tails. Um, so if you look closely at this guy who's wiggling around, his tails, when you get to see him from a side angle, they almost look like feathers or leaves. They're kind of paddled. 
These guys, they'll eat a lot of the plant material on the bottom. Like I said, they can end up as food for dragonflies. Um, but when they grow up, they'll look a lot like a dragonfly. Their, their wings just sit a little bit differently. Before we end our time together, I wanted to share just a couple more macro invertebrates with you. Um, this is actually a snail. So this is very different from the other two that we have seen so far. The first two were insects, whereas this guy is a mollusk. He does not have six legs. He does not have the three body parts, and he has a shell. Now, I can tell if he is a pollution-tolerant or intolerant snail based on what way his shell opens. So if it opens on the left side, like the snail shell does, it is a lunged snail, which means it's more pollution tolerant. If it opened up on the right side, it would be a gilled snail, and it'd be a little more sensitive to pollutants in the lake. Um, so just to give you an idea, that's one way um, you can use it to measure quality of water. But that being said, even a left-handed snail or a snail with an opening on the left side can still live in a very clean, healthy lake. So that doesn't, if we only found these snails, it might be concerning. But the fact that we found a lot of other stuff too um, is a good sign. In this Petri dish, we also have a couple of back swimmers here um, moving around a lot and stirring up our water. And then I also noticed we have a little water beetle. Let me pull him up. He is pretty quick. So it always takes me a minute to um, get him to focus in the camera. Oh, there he is. Oh, I just caught him for a sec. So that little guy is going to be another insect with that exoskeleton um, and those six legs. And you can even see the water tension around him in this picture. Um, but those are just some of the diverse animals that we will find in the bottom of the lake here at Jackson Lake. And Oftentimes we find even other ones that I didn't get to show you today. So now we're just going to take them back to the lake and let them return to their home. All right, guys. I hope you guys learned so much about macro invertebrates today. But we want to remember that we want to go out and enjoy nature and engage with nature. But we also want to respect it. So that means we want you to leave animals and plants where they're at or if you're able to observe them just like we did with these macros we want to return them to their home so that's what i'm going to do right now make sure they all get back in the water safely make sure we get every little one of them all right thanks for joining us guys